Hello everyone, it is me, Dr. Laserbeam, and this is League of Legends 101, where I go over certain parts of the game, League of Legends. Today we'll be going over how to properly ward, go over different types of warding accessories, and go over vision control. Warding is a critical part of winning any League of Legends match. Warding helps you see what your enemies are doing, keep an eye on objectives, keep an eye on your enemy jungler, allows for safe travel in the jungle, safe rotations during the game, and so much more. Before we go on, I'd like to make one thing clear though. Warding is not the support's responsibility only. It is up to the entire team to ward and do ward wars in order to keep vision control. With that being said, please keep in mind you don't need to throw a ridiculous amount of gold into vision, but make sure you help the team out when you can. For one to be a ward master, one must understand the wards themselves. There are currently four different types of wards to choose from. There are warding totems, stealth wards, sight stone wards, and vision wards. Warding totems are trinkets that are typically the first trinket every lane gets, with the exception of the occasional jungle and the aggressive support. They are pretty much a poor man's ward since they are free and are not as effective as a regular stealth ward since they only last 60 seconds, while a stealth ward lasts 180. However, they are free and can be upgraded once you reach level 9 to be upgraded to a greater stealth totem or a greater vision totem, both for a cheap 250 gold. The difference between the two is that the Greater Vision Totem places a Vision Ward and the Stealth Totem places a Stealth Ward. Both have advantages and disadvantages and I shall go over them later. On to Stealth Wards. Stealth Wards are the frontline force in the Ward Wars and are typically bought till late slash mid game because of their counterpart, the Warding Totem and the Sight Stone. They act the same as a Warding Totem but stay alive longer. Since they are not seen much late slash mid game, they are usually used by laners and sometimes the jungler to protect their lanes from MLG ganks from the jungler or our lane. On to the Sight Stone. The Sight Stone is the very backbone of the Ward Wars. They serve the same purpose as a Stealth Ward, but once purchased you can carry 4 wards at a time without having to buy new ones. Once you use your 4 wards, you can recall to refill your wards for free. The Sight Stone also grants you health, and is used by any support who knows the basics of supporting, as well as a few select junglers, although it seems that jungling with a Sight Stone could become the new norm for League in the near future. Once fully upgraded to the Ruby Sight Stone, you can carry 5 wards, which can be important when fighting for objective control. Also, it grants you extra health, which is also great not only defensively, but also if you have selected a champ that happens to scale off of health, such as Zack or Brom. Last, we have Vision Wards, which are typically used for defensive reasons, but can be used aggressively. These wards never die unless attacked by an enemy champion, and are usually put in one's own jungle. These wards also have 5 hit points compared to the regular Stealth Ward or Warding Totems free. The only disadvantage is that they are not invisible, meaning any enemy champion could find a vision ward and eliminate it, making the placement of these wards more critical than other wards. They also provide vision of invisible or stealthed enemy units, which can be other wards, enemy champions that go stealth like a collie or vein, or those evil shrooms by Teemo that we all have stepped on before. Now that we have gone over the actual wards, one should also know warding accessories. There are two of these which are the sweeping lens and the scaring orb. The sweeping lens are typically used by the jungler and the support after he or she has obtained the sight stone. They are used as anti-warding tools since when used show any enemy stealth wards in a certain area allowing the user to destroy them. They are also used to reveal stealthed enemy champions as well as any other hidden objects, such as once again, the Devil's Shrooms. Once upgraded, they last just a little bit longer and is not restricted to a single area. The Scaring Orb is used by squishies on the team, such as the ADC and sometimes the mid laner. When used, they reveal a small area for 2 seconds, but does not show stealthed enemies. When upgrade, they get a longer range and place a stealth ward after being used. They are used to check out for objectives or suspicious looking bushes. Now that we have gone over wards and warding accessories, we can now go into actual warding tactics. In general, you should know that stealth wards are used to get sight on the enemy's jungler or keep an eye on river till late game. 
Vision wards, however, are used to keep an eye on your own jungle unless you're going full out aggressive. Usually, these wards are placed in bushes, but sometimes placed in paths if there are no bushes around, or if the path proves to be a more effective warding area. Also, some bushes are better for warding than others. Here are examples of good stealth ward areas. These are good areas, since they are placed in areas in which roamers typically come from, allowing you to get a heads up and return to a safe distance before any harm could be done to you. Either that or they are a good area since they are a high traffic spot. Also they allow you to see where your enemy jungler is and may be going. Now here are a few bad examples. These are bad areas to place wards since they are either outside of a bush, in a position that are not usually a ganking position, or placed in the right area but for the wrong time of the game. Now that I have explained the areas that you should and should not place wards, I shall now go over how each person on the team contributes to the success of the ward wars. The supports are the very heart and fierce fighters of the ward wars. Being a support main myself, I make vision a huge priority despite the current condition in my lane. In the early game, I try to get a sightstone by my first or second recall. If I don't have enough gold to buy a sightstone, I get a stealth ward instead and a vision ward if I can buy one. With the stealth ward, I always place it in river bush whenever I can. It is usually a bad idea to place it in lane bushes unless you have a sightstone or you gain dominated in lane and the opposing force is using the bush to their advantage. It is important to note however that if you spot an enemy vision ward to only attack it when it is in the area of your favor and you're not leaving the teammate behind to fend for themselves. If your own ward gets sparred, try to put a fight up for it but do not Leroy Jenkins it. I cannot tell you how many times I've done this myself. For the most part, warning as a support in the mid game compared to the late game are fairly similar. If your team as a whole is dominating, place deep stealth wards in the enemy jungle and pink the crap out of Dragon and Baron. Use your red trinket to make sure they don't even have vision of their own jungle and as a whole make them blind as Lee Sin. If it's an even game, get pinks near but not directly on river and some by high traffic areas near the lane. Use stealth wards to get some deep or semi deep vision on their jungle, and use your red trinket to deny them vision by the river. This goes double for Dragon and Baron. As a jungler, you act as the biggest wild card in the ward wars. The jungler has two viable options get a sightstone with a red trinket, or get an upgrade warding totem and get another item instead. Either way is a good decision, but note that it does cost more to get the sightstone, but you will have a stronger ward wars game. If you go the other way and buy a different item, you will suffer in the ward wars a little but become stronger overall as a champ. If you go the sidestone route, your role early game is to keep track of the enemy jungler and roamers. Basically, your goal is to give yourself vision on roaming enemies and possibly catch them out, or you can just give a heads up to your laners. Also, if you manage to get wards on camps and you're an experienced jungler, you can figure out the route of the enemy jungler, allowing you to adjust your tactics to your new insight on your jungler. Your role is the same as a support's mid slash late game, no matter what the situation may be. Note that if you went for an upgraded warding totem route, you should do the same as before, but you'll not be able to do vision denial or have a as strong warding game. Onto the top laner. The top laner is the most isolated of the team and has to worry less about vision when it comes to his own success. The top laner should try to get upgrade Warrington when possible to keep him or herself safe from ganks. The top laner should also try to get a vision ward for tribush or wherever the hell this bush is called for defensive reasons. If the top laner is staying in lane for a majority of the game, he or she should try to ward in places that the jungler will try to stop their advances, or if the top laner is losing, try warding near river. If the top laner is grouping up, he or she should try to ward the enemy's jungle, especially near the buffs. Onto the mid laner. Being in the middle, 
The mid laner has the most to worry about since there is the most openings for a gank in the mid lane. Like the top laner, the mid laner should try to get upgrade warding to him as soon as possible and ward in these two bushes, or these two other bushes closer to lane if the mid laner is playing extra safe. Which side the mid laner should focus on warding depends on a few things. Consider this with warding. Is the enemy top laner winning lane? Does the enemy jungler like top side of the map? Do I have less vision here? If the answer to majority of these questions are yes, then ward closer to top. If you consider warding the bot bush, ask yourself this. Is the enemy bot lane winning lane? Does the enemy jungler like bot side of the map? And do I have less vision here? Again, if the answer to majorities of these questions are yes, then ward bot bush. And if you have two wards to your disposal, then just ward them both. Unless you have MLG spooky as hell 360 no scope escapes as a mid laner, then ward bushes closest to mid with your warding to him during all phases of the game. If you got a blue trinket instead, then just use it to check on objectives and check out bushes that may look suspicious. Last we have the ADC. Now first off, you should start off with the warding totem pretty much always. If you're worried about the jungler more than the bot lane, then ward river bush or the tri bush if you're red sided and feeling brave. If the opposite is true, then ward the lane bushes. You should always try to coordinate your wards with your friendly support so that if you ward river bush you guys could switch off warding it such as saving your warring totem when your support's warring totem dies out. Also, you can make sure that you both don't accidentally ward the same place at the same time because that's just embarrassing, so make sure to ping to each other. Once your support obtains a side stone, you can get a blue trinket and use it the same way the mid laner does, which is to check out bushes and objectives. Basically, just make sure you don't walk into the entire enemy team. Another thing to talk about is ward safety. When you're going to ward deep into an enemy jungler, Make sure you bring a friend to help you ward or at least have somebody nearby so if you get spotted by the enemy team, they can try to help you escape safely. The last thing you need to do is die just because you wanted to place a ward that could prevent you from dying in the first place. Also, do not face check bushes. Almost every champion has a safe way to use an ability that helps them go into a bush without being caught out by the enemy team so easily. This is especially helpful when the laning phase is ended and you're traveling in between lanes or objectives. Some supports who have Spell Thief's Edge can use their abilities on the bush from a safe distance and see if somebody's hiding in the bush waiting to gank slash catch them out. Some good examples are Mork's Q or W, Nami's Q, Janna's Q, or Lulu's Q. Even supports who don't have Spell Thief's Edge can still check bushes from a distance. Fresh can check with his Q and obviously hooks somebody, you'll know he's there. Also Brahm's Q, because if you hear a little <laughs> then you know that somebody's in the bush. You should also know about ward timing. Ward timing is used for the ward wars in objective areas such as Baron or Dragon. Basically, what you do is if you know that Dragon slash Baron is spawning soon, then set up some wards before it actually spawns to give yourself a heads up as to what the other team will be doing. If you place a stealth ward 2 minutes before Dragon spawns, you still have a minute to view if anybody's doing Dragon. Same goes for Baron. As long as you keep an eye if your ward is around, you'll know if the enemy team is doing Dragon or Baron. And if you know that your ward hasn't died from natural causes and you see it's gone, by all means, head over. A last note before ending this video is that in certain places on the map, you can ward over thick walls into convenient areas. Whatever it's a glitch or not, this can be useful for safe warding tactics. Here are some areas that are special. This has been League of Legends 101. Let me know if you found this video to be helpful, and for all you supports out there, don't you even pink my river bush. Don't you even think about it. If you do, I will find you and I will end you. And while you're sleeping, I will hack into your account and feed the main rank games and get you reported. Your league career will be over. You hear me, you little sh